All right, I've gotten quite a few comments and requests from you guys to go over the camera setup I use to film all of our hunts. So that's what we're gonna take a look at today. It's a pretty simple setup, there's not a lot of gear. So I'm gonna go over everything that I use and then afterwards I'll give you guys a couple tips to maybe help you set this up in the field. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything. All right, so for the camera, I went with the GoPro Hero 4. Whenever I was first looking at filming our hunts, I was debating between going with a GoPro or a DSLR. I ultimately chose the GoPro because I wanted to be able to participate in the hunts that we were going on. Um, with a DSLR, you're kind of dedicated to holding that camera, making sure everything's in focus and following the birds around, things like that. I wanted to be able to just set up the camera and hit record and be able to participate in those hunts. Um, some other reasons why I chose the GoPro is because it's cheap, it's versatile, um, and it's a nice small camera that's capable of 1080p, 60 frames per second. So you get a decent quality image and a nice smooth shot with that 60 frames a second. Another thing is it's a fixed focus camera, meaning that anything that is past six inches is gonna be in focus. There's no autofocus readjustment that goes on. Um, so you don't have to worry about any shots being blurry as long as the lens is clear. The one thing to consider though is the GoPro is pretty poor in low light. Um, and this really affected some of the video during our teal season because we were shooting teal um, right at shooting time usually. Um, so, like I said, that's one thing to consider if you're thinking about filming your hunts. Alright, so for the microphone, I use a Rode Video Micro. Whenever it comes to YouTube videos, I'm really particular about there being good audio. If there's not good audio, I'm probably just going to click right off of the video. So for my videos, I wanted something um, with some nice good audio. And that's what this microphone provides in a nice small package with no batteries required. It's ran off of the camera's battery just by plugging it in. Um, and then it also includes a dead cat windscreen that just slips right over the microphone like that and it helps cut down on a lot of the wind noise. Um, there is one thing about this microphone, it's what's called a shotgun microphone. So it's basically gonna capture anything that the microphone is pointing at. Um, so it's really good for reaching out and capturing those duck sounds as they're coming in, uh, throwing some quacks in or some whistles, things like that. Um, but it's gonna block out a lot of the sound behind the microphone. So in some shots where I'm holding the camera and I'm looking at the camera like this, uh, point the microphone at myself, the audio is really good, and then if I turn it around and point at the decoys and I'm talking about anything, you can kind of notice that it muffles my voice. Um, and I've kind of worked around that a little bit by just kind of angling the microphone to the side, um, but that's one thing to think about with the microphone. All right, so if you're gonna wanna use a microphone, you're gonna need a microphone adapter for the GoPro. Um, this is what it looks like. This is an off-brand, but I would recommend getting the GoPro branded one. I have seen some issues with some of these cheap off-brand adapters. All right, so the piece that ties all of this together is an aluminum case like this one. This is a Palouse brand or something like that. What this allows you to do um, is it has a cold shoe mount up on the top so that you can mount the microphone to it and screw it down like that. Um, this case also provides a little bit of protection being aluminum, but you do lose that waterproofness of uh, the stock casing that comes with the GoPro, but you do still get access to the side ports, which you are gonna need um, in order to run your mic adapter for the microphone. Uh, you still have access to all of your buttons and stuff, and then it also has a uh, protective screen on top of it to protect your GoPro lens. So you are gonna need something similar to this. Um, I have not found a waterproof option, so if you guys know of one, let me know. Okay, so the next piece, if you're gonna be wanting to run a tripod, is you're gonna need a tripod mount uh, for your GoPro. I just got an Amazon Basics one. It is super cheap and it works just fine. You just screw your tripod mount down into the bottom of it and then your case uh, can slide right into it like that and then you can put it right on your tripod. All right, so for the tripod, I am using a Manfrotto tripod. Manfrotto makes really great tripods. They're nice and sturdy. They are a little bit pricey. Um, this one ran me about 60 or $70. But if you're gonna get a tripod, don't go cheap. Uh, you're gonna want something with some nice sturdy legs like this one. Um, the only thing I don't like about this tripod is that it's not super tall. 
I think whenever it's fully extended, it's only about as tall as I am. I would like something that could get up a little bit higher over our heads um, if I wanted to put it behind us whenever we're on level ground with where the tripod is sitting. Um, but you also lose a little bit of stability if you wanted to get something that was that tall. Um, an alternative is that you could make a do-it-yourself monopole. I know a lot of guys um, modify their mojo stakes so that they can stick them in the ground and then mount their camera on the top of that. That's something else I'm considering for this year um, is making my own pole that's tall enough that I can stake it in the ground behind us. Um, so there's a couple different options there. If you're looking to go the tripod route, just go into the store and look at some and find something that's nice and sturdy and that you think has enough adjustment for you. All right, so for a memory card, I'm using a SanDisk 128 gigabyte memory card. Uh, this is the biggest option that GoPro allows for. I would just get the biggest um, just like this. Um, you don't go with anything smaller. You're probably going to want as much storage as possible. Um, with the settings that I use, I think I get about eight hours of recording time. If you wanted to record uh, 4K footage, that's going to take up a lot more space and you may even need a second memory card. Uh, but for me, this one uh, single 128 gigabyte card has been just fine. All right, so for batteries, I use these Wasabi batteries. Um, they're nice and cheap and they seem to be pretty decent. I have had this one battery die on me in the last little while, um, but you're gonna want a ton of batteries. I think I have five or six total of these plus the battery that came with the GoPro. Um, on those cold days, these batteries really seem to get sucked down and they, I seem to go through a battery once every 30 minutes. These Wasabi batteries are um, in my opinion, just as good, if not better, than the GoPro batteries as far as in their actual battery life. Um, there is an alternative that I'm looking into for this season, and that's what's called a battery eliminator, and it's a cord that will plug into this port on the back of the GoPro, and then you can get some of those little rechargeable battery packs that people use for their phones that they carry in their cars and things like that. Um, and I think those will run a GoPro for like eight, nine, ten hours, something like that. So that is something that I'm considering doing for this season and replacing a lot of these small batteries. All right, so for the settings on the GoPro, I pretty much run everything off. Um, let's see, so I, I use a low light. I'm not sure if it really helps any, but I do turn that on. Um, spot meter and Pro Tune, I turn those off to save battery life. And then I also have the wireless off, I'm never using that, um, and then I turn the beep sounds off. And then for the actual resolution settings, I'm using 1080p, 60 frames per second, and then I use the medium field of view, and I feel like this is a good mix between um, being wide enough that you can capture your entire spread and get some decent shots of those ducks coming in, but then it's also not so wide that it's giving the illusion that those ducks are like 50 or 60 yards out there. So I found that to be um, a good mix for the setup that I'm running. All right, so now that you guys have everything that you need as far as the camera setup goes, the next thing is figuring out how you're gonna set up the camera in the field. Um, the first thing that we always like to do is set up our blind, make sure our height is good, and then after that we set the spread. From there, I can figure out how I want to set up the camera because I can set the camera in the blind or behind the blind and then point it out to the decoys. So you're going to want to be confident that the ducks are going to work into your decoys. And if they're not working into your decoys, you're going to want to adjust your spread and try and do something to get those ducks into the decoys or else you're going to have trouble actually capturing them on film whenever you are taking shots. And if you're having trouble getting those ducks to land right in front of the camera, one thing I really like to do is put the mojos right in the middle of the frame because a lot of times those ducks are going to land either right on top of the mojos or to one side of the mojos. So if you have the mojos right in the center of the frame, there's a good chance whenever those ducks are working, they're going to be in the camera frame. All right, so something to think about is where you want to place the camera in relation to the blind. Do you want it behind you? Do you want it next to the hunters? Or do you want it in front of the blind? 
Sitting the camera behind the hunters is my personal favorite as long as we have the space for it. It's a really great way to get that over the shoulder shot on the hunters and see which hunter was shooting at what duck. It's also a really great option if you have the wind at your back and the ducks are going to be working directly towards you. The only problem with this setup is do you have the space behind you and is the ground taller than where the hunters are standing because you're going to want that tripod high enough that it's looking over the hunters and not just right at their back otherwise they end up just blocking the camera view. Setting the camera off to one side of the hunters is also a good option. It works really well if you have a crosswind. So say the wind is coming from right to left, the ducks are going to be coming from left to right, so you set the camera off to the right side of the hunters, angle it towards the left, so as the ducks are coming across this way, the camera is pointing at them, and you can kind of get that over the shoulder shot on the right side of the blind a little bit, and then you can get the ducks as they're coming across in front of the hunters. Um, we've used that one quite a bit as well. It works really good depending on how you have your blind set up. The other option is to set the camera in front of the blind. I've only done this once and it wasn't really in front of the blind. It was actually in the blind with us between two of the hunters. And I don't really like using this setup because you miss all of the hunter interaction. You can't see which hunter was shooting at what duck. Um, about the only advantage of this setup is that you have the tripod arm right next to you so you can adjust where the camera is pointing. So you can somewhat kind of pan across as the ducks are flying across. Um, but it's all up to you what you guys really want. I don't really like that setup though. Figuring out how you want to set up the camera and what looks good is going to take time, patience, and practice. If you go back and look at some of my earlier videos, you can tell I just wasn't quite getting very good angles. And as the season went on, I kind of started figuring it out a little bit more and understood how I wanted to place the camera. So like I said, it's just going to take time. And the only way that you're going to be able to figure it out is by doing it. So the next thing to figure out is how you actually want to record the hunts. Do you want to do continuous recording where you're recording your hunt from beginning to end or do you want to just hit the record button every single time you see ducks coming in? Um, it's really up to you guys on what you want to use. I've used a mixture of both um, and there's pros and cons to both. With continuous recording you're a lot less likely to miss a shot on film. Um, but you're also going to use a lot more memory space on your computer and on the GoPro's memory card and it's also a lot harder to find clips that way. One tip I do have, figured this out about three quarters of the way through the season, if you hit the settings button on the GoPro while you are recording, it will tag a highlight so that you can go back and find that clip easily. Um, with clicking the record button every single time ducks come in, you're going to save a lot more battery life and memory card space, but you are a lot more likely to miss some of those shots on film. Um, there were a lot of times where I reached over, tried to hit the record button, thought it was recording, and it wasn't. So again, it's just going to take time and practice to figure out what you like to use more. Alright, so that's about all I have for tips and setup. I know I'm going to get some questions about why I use a tripod over a gun cam or a head cam. And the reasoning for that is I just don't like the head shake or gun shake you get from those mounts. Whenever you're moving around a lot, popping up out of the blind, pulling the trigger, it really jolts the camera. And whenever the camera gets that sudden jolt, it really seems to affect the quality of the image um, as well as the audio. Um, another thing is whenever you're wearing a head cam and you're down in the blind, the exposure changes to try and match that darker light and then whenever you pop up into the sunlight it kind of shocks that camera for a second with really bright light and then it has to readjust and sometimes it just doesn't readjust fast enough. Another reason is audio. With those mounts you really want to have a waterproof case on because if it's on your head it, you may fall into the water or the um, head mount may come off and fall into the water so you're just not going to get that good quality audio out of those mounts. Um, but I am going to try and implement some of those shots into this next year's film because I have seen a lot of good footage coming from those mounts. I just don't want our main footage to come from those style mounts. Alright, so another question I get asked a lot is what editor I use for my videos. And I am using 
hit film for Express. It's a pretty powerful free tool on Windows. Um, I'm kind of a newbie with it so I can just put basic stuff together. I'm not exploiting all of the, the features that are available to you, but if you're looking for an editor, that's a good free option. That's all I have for you guys on this one. If you have questions about the camera setup or if you need more tips and advice on setting up a camera for your next hunt, make sure you comment down below. I will answer those questions to the best of my ability. And if you do start recording your hunts, make sure you share them with me. I'm always looking for new hunting videos to watch on YouTube. Um, also, make sure you guys follow my Instagram, that is Drake Valley Outdoors, and I also have a Twitter, and whenever a video goes up on my channel, it posts to my Twitter, and that is Drake Valley. All of that will also be down in the description below. Um, also, make sure you like the video if you liked it, and subscribe so that you can see more tips and review videos in the future. Thank you guys for watching.